Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to go on to the next section of data visualization certification. We're gonna do JSON, APIs, and AJAX. Um, so here, similar to how user interfaces help people use programs, application programming interfaces help programs interact with other programs. APIs, or application programming interfaces, are tools that computers use to communicate with, uh, with one another, in part to send and receive data. You can use an API functionality in your page once you understand how to make requests and process data from it. Programmers often use AJAX technologies when programming APIs. The term AJAX originated from the acronym Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. It refers to a group of technologies that make asynchronous requests to a server to transfer data. What does asynchronous mean? That means that they don't need to be directly in sync. You can make a call, you can make a single, you can make a get request. You can say, hey, give me this information, and that'll get just get you that information back. It doesn't need to be synchronous. That they don't need to be connected directly. Um, technology use synchronous uh, asynchronous requests to server to a server to transfer data, then load any returned data into the page. An asynchronous process has a couple key properties. The browser does not stop loading a page to wait for the server's response. Also, the browser inserts in updated data into the part of the page without having to refresh the entire page. User experience benefits from asynchronous processes in several ways. Pages load faster since the browser isn't waiting for the server to respond in the middle of a page render. Uh, requests and transfers happen in the background without interrupting what the user is doing. When the browser receives new data, only the necessary areas of the page refreshes. These qualities especially enhance the user experience for single page applications. The data transferred between the browser and the server is often in a format called JavaScript object notation. This is also known as JSON. J -S -O -N. JSON res resembles JavaScript object literal syntax, except that it's transferred as a string. Once received, it can be converted into an object and used in a script. This section covers how to transfer and use data using AJAX technologies with the Free Code Camp API. So let's go to the first lesson. So here, uh, we want to handle click events with JavaScript using the onClick property. So you want your code to execute only when once your page has finished loading. For that purpose, you can attach a JavaScript event to the document called DOM content loaded. Here's the, uh, the, here's the code that does this. So the, this is a really important one. A lot of times I get hung up just on the fact that my JavaScript's not loading. So this is basically saying that the document, what we're doing is we're waiting for an event listener and the event listener is called DOM content loaded. So once the website is all loaded up, then it will execute the, um, the function which is in here. So you can implement event handlers that go inside the DOM content loaded function. <clears throat> you can implement an onClick event handler, which triggers when the user clicks on the element with the ID get message by adding the following code. So here they say document.get element by ID get message and onClick of function. So add the click handler inside the DOM content loaded function for the element with the ID of get message. Okay, well, we can literally just copy this in here. I'm going to stretch this out so we can see what's happening better. Sorry, I had it in there already. So we can stretch this out, and then we can just come up here and we type this in. So document.getElementById, well, at this point, um, we are chaining them elements. So to make it a little bit cleaner, we can put this down here. And so, yeah, I think this is the way to pass the tests. But let's look at it a little bit more de deeply. So we're waiting. Let's get rid of uh, the, the comments. So what this is doing, this is saying is wait till the document loads. Now this happens almost immediately when we refresh the page. And so the next thing that happens is once we refresh the page, we add a, an event listener to the message button and the get message button. So if you look down here, get message has an ID of get message. We're saying get element by ID, get message. And then we're adding an on click onto there. And so whenever we click this button, this function will be called. So let's make it do something. So um, button clicked. No, we'll just make it say useful programmer. Okay, so now when we click this button, we should see logs down to here to our console that say useful programmer. Cool, that works. Okay, so that's basically what's going on here. Um, 
yeah, this is a, right now we're using vanilla JavaScript again, which is kind of weird because we've been using ES6 for the last while, but you could definitely refactor all this stuff and use ES6-like functions. And yeah, if you take it all the way to here, I think that you could just go console.log that. Yeah, and so that's actually a way to refactor this down um, slightly. And so yeah, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoy this one. We'll see you in the next lesson.